Welcome back to NASDAQ Trade Talks. I'm your host, Jill Malandrino, global markets reporter at NASDAQ. Join me back at market site. We have Peter Vahansky. He's the vice president over at Data Art, and we're going to learn more about what cloud native is. Great to have you as always with Pleasure us. Thanks here. for joining us at market site. Let's learn more about this. What exactly is cloud native? Right, so cloud native is about how do we build and run our applications to take full advantage of what cloud computing uh, brings to the table. So if we know that our ultimate target environment for our applications and systems is this on-demand, rapidly scalable, ephemeral, virtualized environment that is measured and pay as you go, how would we build our, our applications and run them differently? And it turns out that it's a lot different. Yeah, it sounds like it's going to change the way you develop, deploy, and operate software. It has, it certainly has, and will continue to do so because the technology is not static, they're changing very, very rapidly. So um, think of it this way, um, you, you're, you have to do certain things that you don't necessarily have to do in a non-cloud native environment where you, you're building certain things in from the word go, security, reliability, resilience, scalability, um, those things have to be the considerations of development of, of development teams from the very first day mm -hmm. of, of development. So typically when you hear talk of uh, cloud native development, you hear words like microservices, containers, service meshes, mm -hmm. um, agile, DevOps, uh, immutable infrastructure, declarative APIs, that sort of thing. So those exemplify and characterize cloud native development. So when I cover technologies such as cloud, I always think of an ecosystem. And, and that's really what um, technologies have evolved to is that correct, where you're kind of developing more of an ecosystem? And I would imagine the challenges would be impl um, integrating legacy systems into that. Right, there's, there's, there's a lot in there. So yeah. um, think of it this way. We're thinking about it as modern technologies, instead of a world where technology is basically static, mm -hmm. you treat it as static. Yeah, we now live in a universe where technology is delivered as a set of loosely coupled components that are changing, are able to change dynamically and evolve at the speed of business. And that is what cloud native uh, actually enables you to do. Mm -hmm. So it, we're talking about things you couldn't actually do before, right? Um, let's talk about some of the things that go into cloud native right. perhaps to illustrate the point and to, to begin to understand why those things actually matter. So. We mentioned things like containerization, dynamically orchestrated applications, microservices applications, DevOps, Agile. What do those things mean? Why do they, why do they matter? Um, containerization, think of it as the next step in the evolution of virtualizations. Uh, so one way to conceptualize it is a very lightweight virtual machine that takes seconds or fractions of a second to deploy and, and kill. And that uh, means that they're super, uh, super uh, portable and they lend themselves very well to dynamic scaling. So if, if it's important for your application to be able to, to scale to meet demand and, and do it automatically, then containerization is, is certainly a great technology for that. Uh, those applications tend to be dynamically orchestrated. And that means that yes, you have uh, containers so you can stand up identical clones of say a particular component of your system to meet uh, the incoming traffic, but uh, you don't want to do that manually. So there are uh, state-of-the-art tools like Kubernetes that seems to be the uh, mm -hmm. uh, industry standard today that do that for you instead of you, you having to take care of a million things um, uh, like that. Microservices is a architectural style that enables you to deliver, instead of delivering your big applications, one chunk of code that is thought of, conceptualized, and deployed as one piece, instead you have a, a collection of uh, loosely coupled, very small, special purpose, narrow purpose applications called microservices. The importance of that could not be overstated because this enables you to, because they are loosely coupled, they, they talk to each other via APIs, mm -hmm. you can iterate on them very quickly independently. They are owned by very small teams, they can be conceptualized and owned by very small teams, and you can make changes very quickly, and you can do it safely without impacting other components of your system. Right. So that gives you the agility that you want. What are some of the security concerns around cloud native? You definitely have to address security uh, differently in the cloud native world. So there are certain technical and architectural best practices, like there's certain ways to, to design and not to design your containers. Like you, you don't store sensitive information on containers. You encrypt everything that you can, you encrypt traffic. You monitor traffic f for uh, unusual patterns because you have massive communication between your components, between your microservices over the network. You, uh, uh, like you, you follow those best practices, but even sort of on a high level than that, think of it this way. Like remember three R's, if you can. Mm -hmm. three, uh, repair repave, rotate. Repair means you patch everything. Vulnerabilities come out every day. Uh, many times in a non-cloud world, in an on-premise world, 
and this is where DevOps and immutable infrastructure comes into play. People are hesitant to patch things immediately, and many times you have like batching patches uh, into specific time windows and, and scheduling uh, uh, those patches, and you will go for weeks or months without patching a known vulnerability. That's a huge mm -hmm. risk, potentially, right? Um, you can't, it, it, the reasons people won't patch immediately is because their infrastructure is very brittle. Snowflake type server that's very unique that y y its configuration is no longer very well known to you. So you don't know if you uh, uh, patch it, you don't know that it's going to stay up and running. It may fall down and never come back up, right? So pets versus cattle is a great metaphor. So you treat a server like a pet. It's very unique. It's, you love it. If it falls, falls ill, if your pet falls ill, the entire family is up in arms. You, you go into the, to the vet versus cattle where everybody's the same. You know, every single cow, whatever animal we're talking about is the same. And if a particular server dies, you just stand it back up from a golden image because it's a clone, be it a VM or a container, um, and you go on with your day, right. right? So immutable infrastructure is a great concept that can be practiced uh, um, in the cloud native, uh, uh, cloud native world and is greatly facilitated by containerization. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like there's, there's benefits to shifting cloud native for sure. Right, so, so that's, that's repair. Repair everything, patch everything immediately. And repave, repave. repave is instead of keeping your server up for a record period of time, like my Unix server has not been rebooted in three years and has been up and running, you want the opposite of that. You want to kill off and stand back up from a golden copy, clones of your containers and VMs on a schedule. And that means that if there's a malware that's latched onto a particular instance of your service, for example, because of some vulnerability, the attacker was able to get in, if you kill that server, if you kill that particular container and send it back out from a golden image, the malware is gone. So that makes it that much more difficult for an attacker to execute the attack, right? So you, you introduce this entropy. You actually ask yourself, how, how long, what's the longest possible period that I can afford? Or rather, what's the short, shortest possible period that I can, I can uh, get away with uh, restarting, rebooting my right. containers and my VMs. And that's so you introduce entropy that way. And re-rotate, the, uh, the, yep. the, uh, uh, the last R, rotate credentials. Credentials leaking is one of the top three reasons for vulnerabilities and threats. And so you should, you should pretty much assume that credentials will be leaked. Therefore, you revoke them on schedule. You rotate them. It's user credentials, it's application credentials, it's database access credentials, it's uh, uh, API keys. All of those secrets, manage them dynamically, comprehensively, use uh, a, you know, like an AWS KMS or uh, like a, a Vault a solution from uh, HashiCorp or something like that to dynamically manage your secrets uh, in a sort of a cryptography as a service way. All right, so every time they, they ask us to change our passwords, we should actually be grateful that they're doing that. Absolutely, oh, but right. you want a machine to be able to do that for you dynamically without you needing to worry about it. All right, repair, repave, rotate. That's, That's the three right. Words. Thank you so much, Peter, for joining us. And thank you for joining us on Trade Talks. We're Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter on, at NASDAQ.